In today's news, prisoner escapes custody after being escorted into the East End Police Station. Location, location, location. Finding the right location for events in the BVI amidst a pandemic. A look at some successful choices. And the CCT distributed nearly 100 gifts to children within the BVI at their third annual December to Remember Christmas gift distribution event over the weekend. And the Silby Romney Tortola Pier Park to receive some 60 additional parking spaces and heightened security during the Christmas season. All this and so much more after word from our sponsors. You're watching 284 News. You value traditions. To You value music. You value education. Family. I love you. <laughs> Service. Thank you. You're welcome. Love. Life. At Popular, we're committed to you and everything our community values. For the things you value the most, count on us. Popular. Welcome everybody. It's Tuesday, December 21st, 2021. A terrific Tuesday to each and every one of you. I'm Ron Grant and we are coming to you live and direct from Tortola in the beautiful British Virgin Islands. And I'm Kamal Heans, viewers, and we start today's newscast with an appeal to public from the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force as they attempt to recapture another escaped prisoner. While the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force is seeking the public's assistance in recapturing an escaped prisoner who escaped custody while being escorted to the East End Police Station. Well, he is 36-year-old Kurt Ramsat, who is suspected in a number of burglaries within the territory. Well, according to police, Ramsat was last seen in a long look area close to the Stickett. Well, police are asking anyone who has seen Ramsat or knows his whereabouts to contact the East End Police Station directly at 368-9742 or call the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force three-digit access number at 311. Well, he was last seen... And this is a quote from police where he, they said that he was last known to be employed at Scrub Island as a landscaper. He frequents the general East End Sticket, 42nd Street areas. And quote, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force stated, Well, if seen, please contact the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force by calling its three-digit access number 311 or the Force Intelligence Unit at 368-9339. Ron, um, obviously, this is what, what the third escapee that would have yes. escaped custody, whether it be of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force or um, the prison at Balsam Gut, where we would have seen that in the territory, where you know they would have obviously, obviously be asking, uh, would have been asking, sorry, of the public's assistance in trying to recapture these escaped per, uh, persons. Um, just uh, I think it was earlier this this month we would have seen a, a prisoner who would have escaped. Boston we got since 2017 and been, have, and he, has been in the territory since yeah yeah and he was recently recaptured now we see somewhat of another escape um, situation where a prisoner now uh, from the Long Luck area he's a Long Luck resident basically and he's looking uh, the police are looking to, to basically you know recapture this person well uh, residents have been asking why uh, Kamal is this uh, seemingly such a frequent uh, instance amongst uh, prisoners at not only Balsam Gut uh, but in general I think uh, holistically there has to be a, a look an overall a look at the uh, prison their facilities and how they operate maybe heightened security um, of course we know we've recently uh, had a new uh, prison uh, commissioner so I do wish him all the best but for the sake of residents and their uh, level of uh, comfortability and securiteness I do think this is something that we have to continuously uh, look into uh, to make sure that all the protocols that uh, should be used are doing so not only to protect residents but the prisoners themselves as well as officers of the institution. Uh, viewers continuing on, since the onset of the pandemic, businesses and promoters have struggled to diversify and maneuver through the changing times. Specific locations have always been known to host events such as the BVI Festival Grounds, Cane Garden Bay, Tortola Pier Park, the multi-purpose sports complex, and at local beaches like the Long Bay Beach in Beef Island. They have always been the top choices for events. Now, as the territory has reopened and businesses and promoters seek to live with COVID-19, the territory has seen an influx in new and creative venue options that allow for social distancing and observance of COVID-19 protocols. Here is a look at a few choices uh, that we have seen. Successful choices, that is, yet creative venues for uh, options for events. We begin with Ahsoka on the Bay. 
over the weekend, the uh, privately owned Skelton Bay lot in Fish Bay was the venue for the Soka on the Bay show. This new location was a huge success as there was safe and adequate parking accompanied by a parking attendant, suitable space for social distancing and the implementation of COVID-19 protocols, clear and organized entry and exit points, adequate security and clear separation for regular and VIP ticket holders. Now, while events such as Soka on the Bay have never been held at Skelton Bay lot before, it truly opens the possibilities the BVI has to offer regarding utilizing unpopular and underutilized locations for small, medium and large events. Now, our newsroom spoke to some patrons at the event and got their feedback on the choice in location. One resident said, and I quote, I think the location was a huge success. I was happy I could drive right in and not have to walk far to the venue. A visitor from the USVI said, and I quote, this was a genius location. It's out of the way, but not too far. Very accessible, but you feel like you're somewhere else. Now our newsroom reached out to Mr. Kenny Thompson of KT Productions who said, and I quote, since we are in the COVID era, we were looking for a venue that would offer comfort, space, and a great outdoor ambiance. Skelton Bay Lot has all that plus more with the ocean as a backdrop, a relaxing atmosphere, and it was a something outside of the norm, hence the name Soka on the Bay. Thompson continued by saying the spot actually popped out while sitting there having lunch. I immediately knew, he said, it was the perfect location for a KT event. I reached out to the Skeltons who immediately saw the vision and the rest was history. Now Thompson also mentioned viewers that his promotion company plans on hosting more events of different genres of music at the Bay Lot. Now patrons were seen, uh, which was very positive, wearing their mask throughout the event as well as making a conscious effort to social distancing. Over the years, Christmas in the city has been the home of a number of different locations. This in part to varying issues. This year, the Association of Small Businesses found a new location that welcomed and enjoy, well, was welcomed sorry, and enjoyed by patrons. The annual Christmas in the City event, formerly Christmas on DeCastro Street, is the single event that consistently signals the beginning of the Christmas season here in the BVI and sets the tone of the capital in Motown. This year was no different. The thrilling weekend filled with vendors from across the territory gathered to lure shoppers with goods. Last year, the event was held in the parking lot of the Ralph T. O'Neill Administration Complex, but construction at the site forced organizers to search yet again for a new location this year. Organizer Mrs. Janice Brathwith Edwards said, and I quote, the central administration complex parking lot was a good move, but that area isn't paved and there was a lot of windstorms and dust last year that was hard for people uh, dealing with food. Now some 40 plus vendors uh, viewers set up in the new location selling products as well as a variety of Christmas presents. Attendees strolled by the boots indulging in local foods and stopped by to enjoy the music in a safe and comfortable environment. Children got the opportunity to roam and run freely. She also added, when we look for a location, one thing we keep in mind is safety. Now, a lot, she said, of people allow their young people to come to Christmas in the city because they know is a secure area. Edward said next year, the event will be held in the very same location. In January 2022, Sativ Events will be hosting yet another highly anticipated day party. The first was held at Wyndham Tortola BVI Lambert Beach Resort. However, the next event scheduled for January 3rd, 2022, will be held at the Queen Elizabeth II Park. The day party promises a lavish experience with some special guest, Chenille Moore, from 12 to 6 p.m. under the team Be Bold, Be Different, Be Lavish. Now, our newsroom caught up with Sativa Events, who said, and I quote, Sativa Events saw beyond the open space. We believe. She said, we believe that Queen Elizabeth uh, II Park as a public venue has the potential to be transformed where mature persons can attend and have an enjoyable time. We look forward to engaging patrons in a lavish way in the beautiful British Virgin Islands. Now, as the territory viewers of the Virgin Islands continues to maneuver through COVID-19 while engaging various audiences through entertainment, it is left to see if the other promoters and businesses will creatively utilize the many underutilized venues in the BVI. We want to say kudos to uh, the organizers of these events and we look forward to much more as we continue to entertain um, and engage the BVI public and its visitors.
Indeed. Well, viewers, a lot next. CCT distributed nearly 100 gifts to children within the BVI at their third annual December to Remember Christmas gift distribution event over the weekend. And we also see the Cyril B. Romney Tortola Pier Park to receive 60 additional parking spaces and heightened security during this Christmas season. But we get to these and more stories after a word from our sponsors. So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, it would read his mind. There's the answer, Cole. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Well, welcome back, viewers. Well, approximately 100 children within the British Virgin Islands received gifts as part of CCT's third annual December to Remember Christmas gift distribution event over the weekend. Well, the event occurred at the CCT's Tortola Pier Park location on Sunday, December 19th, where children ages 3 to 12 were given items ranging from toys to cell phone devices. Well, CCT's head of marketing, Ricardo Ricky Richardson, spoke on the event, which he said is part of CCT's 12 Days of Christmas initiative, which will be giving back a total of $50,000 in gifts and cash to CCT customers. Take a listen. I think this is the third year that we are doing this, but we're doing this on one as part of our 12 Days of Christmas promotion. As you know, um, we're just giving away, um, giving back to our loyal CCT customers. Um, we've already given away um, cash, we've give, given away iPhones. Um, today was pretty much for the kids and um, it always brings me joy to see the smiles on the children's faces when they come and they, they sit with Santa, they take their pictures and what's not. And uh, this is definitely something we, de we will continue. But what I want everybody to do is keep topping up come into the store, pay your bill, sign up for a new service because the 12 days of Christmas continues straight through until December 24th. On the uh, 23rd, we're actually going to have a big raffle drawing where we're going to be, uh, somebody's going to be winning a 65 inch TV, an iPhone, and we're also giving away a whole year of internet service. That will be LTE 3. And on the 24th, which is uh, Christmas eve we have uh, the grand finale that is the cct live challenge where somebody's going to be walking away with lots of money well viewers i subsequently caught up with mr richardson who further explained the process that was undertaken in selecting the children who were beneficiaries of the gifts well he said there was a registration process in place which allowed cct customers the opportunity to register two children per household on a list we went about uh, selecting the children is uh, we put out uh, a notice where uh, parents were to uh, register to sign their kids up in order for them to receive the gifts. So they would have um, called um, the office or get in contact with someone from CCT and then we would have added them to a list. So that list would then contain the names of the children, the names of the parent, as well as the age of the children. So each household would have been able to add up to two children. So on that day, on Sunday, we gifted around um, 100 children with um, gifts. And um, it was it was quite, quite a great event, I must say. Uh, I think we did a bit more than we did last year, but we're definitely looking forward to see how we could do even better next year. Well, Richardson also said that CCT plans to commence the process from an early date, an earlier date, sorry, in 2022, with a goal of potentially blessing between 150 to 200 children across the territory. For next year, uh, we, we already see um, how things went this year. So what we want to do, we want to start a bit earlier with the registration and uh, we want to see if we could even do more gifts. So instead of the, the 100, we want to see if we could go 150, 200 just to bless more people, you know, because it's all about giving back to the customers, giving back to the, the kids and creating that great feeling around Christmas time with CCT. Well, Ron, certainly a lot of smiles from kids within the BVI thanks to CCT and their Christmas initiative. 
Yes, absolutely. Viewers, continuing on in a recent interview with Tweet for Media Chief Executive Officer of the Sirobi Romney Tortola Pear Park, Mr. Vance Lewis, and Marketing and Business Development Manager, Ms. Zoe Walcott, spoke about the recent happenings at the Sirobi Romney Tortola Pear Park, now apart from the agency's three days of Christmas events, which seek to bring in the Christmas season with exciting family-friendly events and promotions, the Tortola Pear Park team was pleased to announce the addition of some 60 more parking spaces to the premises. Now, parking at the facility has long been an issue for patrons and visitors. However, CEO Lewis and his team are working feverishly, they say, to bring some relief to this issue. Vance Lewis said, and I quote, you know, because Christmas is coming up, we are actually stepping things up a notch. We are in the process of ensuring that we have enhanced parking. Enhanced parking means we have additional parking opportunities. One of the uh, important complaints that we have been having in the Pear Park is that parking is limited. So right at the entrance, there is a spot being cleared, rolled and paved, and it's going to be marked to provide some 60 additional parking spots. Lewis continued by saying, then we will actually open the gate to allow people to come straight into the pier, so you are going to be literally one step from the pier park. Now this uh, is an addition to the parking that we have within the facility at the moment. In addition to the much needed parking spaces at the Sirobli Romney Tortola Pier Park, the management has sought viewers to heighten the security for locals and visitors alike. Lewis noted that this time of year is extremely busy and they are ensuring locals, visitors, and businesses are safe while shopping and enjoying the facility. When asked if the heightened security is only for the Christmas season, Lewis said, and I quote, they have hopes of continuing and increased security measures as more development changes are, expe are expected. Now, the shopping and entertainment facility provides an additional shopping option for the BVI, while you can find over some 50 stores and restaurants, including unique BVI stores, new concept businesses, as well as prominent international brands offering an unmatched shopping, dining, and entertainment experience. This fantastic facility is most uh, important to the BVI community and, of course, our visitors as they come to enjoy our facility. Season greetings to our visitors and uh, kudos to the uh, Totola Pear Park as they continue to uh, implement and be creative in measures that would be suitable uh, to the BVI public. Indeed. Well, viewers, well, up next, the BVI Film Commission hosts Media Farm Breakfast with top BVI media professionals. And we also see on sporting scene where Wolves, VG United and One Love United were all victorious in the weekend's BVI Football Association's National Football League competition. Well, all this went to it for a news return. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a brand new season of The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, a show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. It doesn't always involve suits and, uh, wait, bow ties, but raw, real life lessons that translate to grounded, community minded, well rounded men. This season, I'm taking you on an entirely different journey from chefs to dancers, philanthropists, communications specialists, and much more. I'm heading outside in the field to share the journey of some of the BBI's best and brightest men. From East End to West End, Bojangara, Jaspanek, not forgetting Anigara. Our Virgin Islands gentlemen are doing the damn thing, and I'm so proud. Get ready to reason, reflect, and redirect. We are the movers and shakers of this generation, and we ain't afraid to show it. The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, Season 3, by yours truly, Ron Grant, raising a generation of greatness. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Viewers, welcome back. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Now, continuing on on the local scene, the BVI Film Commission, under the leadership of Film Commissioner Miss Natalie O'Hodge, met with approximately 20 
Top media professionals from a range of industries in the Virgin Islands on December 17th at the Luz Mongoose for a morning of networking, engaged conversation, and understanding the Film Commission and its role. Now, in an invited comment, Natalie O'Hodge said, and I quote, It was very important for us to host the first of its kind media professionals FAM Breakfast, which served as an event aimed at bridging the gap with media professionals in the industry. The FAM Breakfast is a a uh, familiarization event that created an atmosphere whereby local media professionals, specifically those in film and photography industries, were able to meet and network with other like-minded professionals. Our objective, she said, was to ensure that our local media professionals get to know their film commission officers, the role of the film commission, and to identify and discuss ways how we can best support their endeavors as they navigate careers within the industry. Now, Hodge continued, we are pleased with the turnout and thankful to those persons who took the time to attend the informative and interactive session. Moving forward, we hope to create other initiatives where we can collaborate with local media professionals to ensure we make and promote the BVI through our shared talents and skills as a premier film location, which would ultimately create an uptake in the number of film productions coming to the British Virgin Islands. Now, viewers also present was a former film commissioner himself, Mr. Rodney Skelton, the present deputy director of the BVI Tourist Board, who spoke extremely highly of the new film commissioner and her team who have hit the ground running. Skelton lauded their efforts in ensuring that media professionals understand the team effort it will take in marketing the Virgin Islands as a premier film destination. Now, viewers, the Film Commission was established over 25 years ago to facilitate and encourage film productions coming into the unique Caribbean country. Since then, the entire country of the Virgin Islands has embraced the film fraternity and warmly welcomes an increased number of productions each year. Kudos to the BVI Tourist Board on this initiative, and we do look forward to partnering with them as we continue uh, through this film era. And Ron, um, I mean, obviously we were both there at the event and we, we welcomed it because it was one of the first times and, and one of the things that uh, Mr. Skelton would have said, you know, is in his um, in his career as a commissioner, one of the things he regretted is He's not, not having as much, similar, yeah. as much uh, meetings with the, with the local media to help, you know, spread the word and uh, help further market um, the BVI Film Commission across the world, basically. And that was really welcome on the basis that what it does is it gives us as media professionals more insight in what takes place and what is yes. required on a number of different levels and be able to move forward and unite as one, basically moving forward to push the, the, the whole product of the BVI in its entirety. Well, viewers, uh, moving on to some football news where the Wolves, along with the VG United and One Love United Football Clubs, were all victorious over the weekend during the continuation of the BVI Football Association's National Football League, where the Wolves defeated Lionheart FC 4-2 to close the gap between the top five teams to just two points, with the Panther FC leading the standings into the Christmas break. But Paul Edwards gave Wolves the lead with a header from a Phil Nelson free kick in just the third minute. But the game and barely uh, the, the game had barely restarted when Lionheart's Kelly Campbell equalized from a set piece, a set piece sorry, of their own. But Edwards netted his th second goal to give Wolves a 2-1 lead in the 14th minute, but Wolves conceded a second goal in the 18th minute at the boat of Michael Butt, who made it 2-2, staring home across from the right of Alessandro Palladino, who ensured that Wolves entered into the half leading 3-2, after tapping home a well-placed cross from Luca Reach in the 34th minute. But commenting on the victory was Wolves coach Nelson, who said, and I quote, But I thought we played well for most of the game. The first half was a little frantic, but we improved in the second half, and it felt like we had more control across the pitch, which was pleasing. We were incredibly happy to get the three points, especially against a formidable team and one that will be close to us in the league." End quote. Well, meanwhile, in the second game, VG United demolished uh, the short-handed one Caribbean 5-0 with goals coming from top scorer Levon Williams in the 11th and 60th minutes, Devontae Samuel in the 18th minute, Sheldon Harry with his first goal since his transfer in the 81st minute, and Thomas Albert in the 84th minute. Well, VG's coach Jermaine Abrams congratulated his team for the performance displayed in their comprehensive victory. 
Well, he said, and I quote, but the players really worked hard in training this week and were motivated when they were a sh player short, but it was good. It was a good game and we could have capitalized on a lot more situations to score. It was a good game overall, though, um, and a good, well, sorry, through and good to see um, things we had put into place working and most of the youngsters getting on the score sheet, end quote. But in the third game of the weekend, One Love United beat Rebels 5-2 as Tyrell Forbes fired home a hat trick in 20 uh, frenetic minutes either side of the half time break. But his first came in the 27th minute to make the score 2-1 against Abner uh, Villanueva who had opened the scoring in the 19th minute from the penalty spot. But Forbes made it 3-1 in the 35th minute and then rounded out his hat trick in the 47th minute also for the, from the penalty spot to make the score 4-1. But well, then Vin Jones made it 4-2 in the 51st minute after Jimmy Peters had scored just before halftime. But Nikain Plunkett sealed the deal for One Love United to end the game with a 5-2 victory. I run, uh, obviously, um, some exciting um, sporting activity Very over exciting. the UK. And what will happen now, they will take a, 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 a brief Christmas break for everyone to be able, to be able to basically just recoup, be able to, you know, have some time with the family during the festive period, and basically come back again from January to, to basically decide who will win the BVI Football Association's National Football League Championship. And beautiful. We want to take this opportunity to wish the athletes and the Federation of the Football Association the very best as they've done a remarkable job throughout the year in uh, raising awareness, uh, keeping the athletes in, uh, engaged, and also uh, bringing to light a number of football activities throughout the territory. You guys have done an amazing job and we wish you the very best. Viewers, that is it for today's News Roundup. Be sure to follow us for your daily news updates at 284media.com and like us on Facebook at 284media and 284BVI on Instagram and Twitter. It's always a pleasure. I'm Ron Grant. I'm viewers. I'm Kamal Haynes and we'll see you again tomorrow where we deliver our daily note dose of local and regional as well as international content here at 284 News, your source for honest and impartial news right here on 284media.com. Well, happy Tuesday everyone and have a great evening. Bye-bye.